Today we're making one of my favorite fall treats, an apple spice cake. It's filled with all of your favorite fall spices, 1,003 apples exactly, and browned buttercream that is so good you'll just be eating it by the spoonful. It's also filled and topped with a homemade caramel that is made of dreams. Okay, let's get started. I have a pound of butter in my hand and while a vanilla buttercream whipped up with this would be delicious, we're actually gonna brown it first. In case you haven't browned butter before, it really gives it a caramel, nutty undertone that is just intoxicating. The first thing we need to do is brown our butter because it has to brown and then we have to bring it back to room temperature. So it'll go into the fridge and chill while we make our batter. All you're doing is plopping some butter, in this case it's a full pound, unsalted. Mm. And that's it. So you're taking a full pound of butter and heating it over like a medium low, medium to low. You don't want it to bubble up and sizzle because it can't explode. There is water in the butter. So it's just gonna be cooking down and the milk solids will be caramelizing. When they caramelize, it creates this nutty, amazing undertone of flavor that just is good in every dish. This will be bubbling for about 10 minutes and my advice to you is just to keep an eye on it while you're doing other things in the kitchen because if the heat's too high, you'll get these pops of butter splattering all around and they can be very dramatic. So if you wanna make sure there's no splatters, you can just add a wire mesh on top like this and that'll solve all of your problems or if you wanna be confident to not do that, that's up to you too. Once you see those milk solids caramelizing on the bottom, go ahead and use your spatula and just move them around so that they don't burn. While this is cooking, we're gonna prep our apples. I'm just gonna set this aside carefully since it's hot. I've made this recipe a ton of times and in the recipe it says three to four apples. So every year when it's fall and I'm making this cake, I look and I say, John, why did you say three to four apples? Why don't you give a specific measurement? And it's because both will work. So if you want pure apples with tons of moisture in there, you're just gonna bake the cake for longer. If you want more of a cakey and a bit lighter feeling, then three apples and you're fine. Either way, you're gonna get a lot of flavor and the apples will impart a ton of moisture into the cake. You can use any apple that you like in this recipe. I often will use honey crisps because they're so sweet and tart, but Fuji apples work well, Macintosh, anything that you can find that's fresh and not mealy. If you want to make this cake and have parts of it done ahead of time so it'll be a breeze in the moment, go ahead and peel the apples, core them, mince them, and have them ready. It's okay if they're brown, they'll be baking, but if that bothers you or if you want a little bit of extra acid, squeeze some lemon juice over the chopped apples and they'll be ready to go. All it has to be is small enough to bake down and soften. I've chopped three apples, I'm going to do a half of the fourth and I think that'll be just the right amount. Really depends on the apple size though. All right, I'm gonna do the right thing and measure the ingredients out so you can replicate this recipe exactly. So that's one cup, two cups, and so about three cups and a little bit extra of this apple. This step is optional, but I will be squeezing in a little bit of lemon. One, because I don't wanna see the browning, even though I'm the only one who's gonna see it. And two, because I like the little bit of acid the lemon will bring to this. It kind of brightens the flavor. Good. Toss, and I can set this aside. All right, let's take a look at our browned butter and see what it's like right now. It's quieted down, it was very noisy for a while. So if you look inside of here, you can see through the froth that there is some browned butter flecks. So it's coming along. I'm just gonna stir it up and move those milk impurities around so they get mixed in and other things get a chance to uh, caramelize up. Take a look at all this delicious color coming in. Oh yes, look at this color, oh my gosh. Towards the end of browning butter, you have to keep an eye on things because it'll go from being uncaramelized, uncaramelized, uncaramelized to burnt. The end step happens right away. All right, so this is done. I'm gonna take it off of the heat, turn that off, transfer it to a bowl. Just take a look at that. All those caramelized milk solids are in there. This is too hot to make a buttercream with. It's gonna go into the fridge to chill. You want it to come to room temperature, but not be hard. So go ahead and stir it in the fridge a couple times. You'll see the edges becoming hard. This needs to be mixed up. 
All right, now it's time to make our caramel, and I just want to tell you ahead of time that homemade caramel will 100% always be better than store-bought caramel. One cup of brown sugar into a pot, half a cup of cream, doing a quarter teaspoon of salt, you can add more or less, and then five tablespoons of unsalted butter. Ooh. <laughs> One tablespoon of vanilla extract. All right, this is on like a medium heat, and all you do is just give it a stir, once it starts melting and, oh my gosh, the smell. The smell is amazing. So it's gonna melt up and what happens is it starts bubbling, that sugar is cooking and the uh, water from the cream is boiling off. You'll see it bubbling, it'll start thickening and once it gets to a desired thickness, it's ready. All right, so it's been about a minute and you can already see some vigorous bubbling happening. That sugar is cooking, you're gonna give it a stir. Once you see this bubbling happening where it comes to the top of the pot or closer, keep stirring it, keep stirring it, and then the bubbles will subside and you'll see this thickening happen. That looks basically good to me. I'm gonna give it a test. And then I'm just gonna see, yeah. Mmm, that's perfect. You can see how it coats the back of a spoon. It needs to cool down because it'll totally just melt the cake when you put it on unless it's room temperature. Once this cools down, all that butter will really thicken things up. I am gonna help it along just a bit by taking it off the heat, transfer it to a bowl. Yeah, very, very hot. Be careful. One more tablespoon of butter. I'm just gonna whisk that in. It's optional though, but I want the thickness to be better for a drip. It makes a difference. Okay, once that butter is all mixed in, you can pop this into the fridge, and yes, you could totally make this a day ahead. You can jar it and keep it in the fridge for like a week or so, and it's an amazing snack to have on ice cream, just by the spoonful, whatever you like. Now it's time for the batter. I feel like we waited a long time, but the prep on this cake is so worth it. We're starting off with three cups of all-purpose flour into a large bowl and we're gonna sift everything. One and a half cups of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and now for the spices. This is what makes this cake just scream fall. Two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of allspice, one of my favorite spices, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and optional, but a pinch of cloves. Now we're gonna sift everything together to make sure that our leavening agents are well distributed as well as those spices. Give it a good whisk. Set this aside. For the wet mixture, we have a quarter cup of yogurt in the bowl. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And I'm a coconut fiend, so this cake has half a cup of melted coconut oil. If you don't have it, go ahead and use all vegetable oil. It'll be fine. Splash of vanilla. Now I'm cracking three room temperature eggs into my mixture. One, two, and three. Okay, now we're gonna whisk it up. Now we're gonna combine the dry with the wet and the apples. And when you make this batter, it's gonna look so thick. And you'll think, oh my gosh, he forgot the milk, he forgot the water, something's wrong. But no, the apples are full of water and moisture, so when they bake down, It'll make everything work out. Let's mix this up. There we go. So, when you see this, now we're almost ready to add those apples in. See that consistency? Nice, that's what we want. All right, now for our chopped apples. All right, time to fold those apples in. So here, just make sure everything's distributed and that batter is broken up by the apples. You'll notice I'm using a spatula with a metal handle because I have broken wooden spatulas with this batter before. Done, I got my work out for my left hand. We're gonna prep the pans first, so let's set this aside. I'm using six by two inch pans, it's my favorite size because it's the perfect form of portion control and the cake looks really cute. All right, just butter the pans. I used my extra butter papers with a little dab of butter and to spread butter on these pans and now we're just gonna kick around some flour so easy and is the perfect way to prep your pan. If you find your cakes are cracking or bad things are happening, it normally means that your cake hasn't finished baking yet. Take a tablespoon of flour, and just kick it around the pan. 
then dump it out into the next pan and repeat the process. I want to get cake layers that are almost exactly the same height and bake evenly, so I'm going to weigh the pans out with the batter so I can say, okay, they all have the same amount roughly, give or take a couple of grams. These can go into the oven at 350 and it will be about 40 minutes. A lot of apples in this cake, it has to cook for a while, or you'll think, oh, the cake's done, it's been half an hour, take it out, it's fine for a few minutes. Center collapses, you're sad. So leave it for 20 minutes, switch the pans around if your oven heats unevenly, and then 20 more minutes, make sure that center is set. Now it's almost time to pop them in the oven, but first I want them to bake evenly. So if you watch my channel, you probably know I'll be adding on some cake strips. These are just wet fabric strips. You can make your own or buy them. I have a whole video on them. If you click up here and they are magic. They help you get a nice flat cake layer with fluffier edges. They're great. Okay, cake strips on and then these will bake in the oven for 40 minutes at 350 and don't try and take them out early. My brown butter firmed up a lot. It's not super solid right now, but it'll be okay. Trust me. I'm gonna pour it, I know pour, into my bowl of the standing mixer. No need to mix this up first. I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar in here to get it started. Into the stand mixer and fit it with a paddle attachment. Cover it with a tea towel. Mix it on low for a bit just to get it started. Take a peek. Increase that speed. All right. I'm adding in a little bit less than a teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of cinnamon. And you can see it's already starting to come together, but it needs more sugar. It's a little soft. So I'm going to be adding in a little bit less than two pounds or 0.9 kilograms of confectioner sugar is up to you. It's really about the consistency and taste for me. So if you want to have a softer buttercream that is less sweet, less sugar. <laughs> I'm gonna drizzle in some cream now. Look at this. Look at this buttercream. That's exactly what you want. It's brown from all those caramelized bits of butter, but so light and fluffy, sweet, salty, cinnamon, vanilla. This is everything you want. This tastes amazing. I'm gonna add it into a large piping bag and just snip the tip off, and then it's time to assemble and pipe. All right, my cake layers are out of the oven. and I just wanna show you how flat they are thanks to the cake strips. Look at this, perfectly flat and they're all the same height because we weighed them out. Some people have said, oh, but you turn your cake layers upside down, I bet the bottom's domed. Take a look at this. That's the bottom, that's the top, they look the same. Having a flat cake layer makes decorating cake so much easier. Okay, let's decorate. Pipe the buttercream onto the first layer of the cake. Give a nice drizzle of caramel, add as much as you like. Put the second layer on and repeat the process. Now cover the cake completely in buttercream. It doesn't have to be a thick layer, just give it a cover. Use your clean offset spatula and while you're turning the cake, pull it in with the knife almost level to the cake. After each swipe, wipe the knife off and you'll eventually be done. Use an offset spatula to smooth the sides. Leave as much of the buttercream on as you want. You could be a totally naked cake or be totally covered, it's up to you. Add the caramel to the edge. A swirl on top and then smooth it out with an offset spatula. You can pop it into the fridge to chill or eat it immediately. I cannot believe the transformation from that like mountainous, craggy, batter that you thought was like never gonna work to this amazing, fluffy, moist, delicious apple spice cake. The definition of culinary magic, if you ask me, and I hope you did. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite. 
I ate this a little bit before, so I know it's delicious though, but just for you and for me because I'm so hungry, I will take this bite. That butter, oh my God. The browned buttercream is magic. Just make it, put it on anything, you'll be happy. The cake is so tender, it melts in your mouth, but the apples still have like a slight toothiness, almost like al dente apples, I tell you. They have a bit of a crunch and so much flavor. You gotta make this cake. All right, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get baking.